Hello everyone. How are you guys? I hope you are always healthy and fine. For the first time in a long time, I can finally have a video segment where I can try to interact with you more closely, which started from my two posts a few days ago, where I want to try to hear your opinions about empires and puzzles. Actually, I have a little difficulty creating this type of content because content like this really takes time to create. And to be honest, I did all this work myself, from pre-production to post-production. And yes, it was very difficult and tiring work. I can't even remember the last time I had time to go on holiday with my wife. But enough of that, I don't want us to focus on stories about me. Because I want us both to look at the reality of what is currently happening in empires and puzzles, where many players, including myself, feel that there are a lot of changes taking place in empires and puzzles. And according to most players, this change is going in a bad direction. Honestly, for some time now, I personally don't feel as good as before when I first played this game. And it cannot be denied that after almost five years of regularly creating empires and puzzles content on my channel, I have witnessed so many changes, both good and bad. However, in the past two years, I have seen that every update or patch launched by the developer has begun to seem less concerned with the community and the opinions of the players, so that many players feel unappreciated and ultimately choose to leave this game without any longing or intention to return. In the end, their departure leaves another empty space in the game, which makes this game quieter than before. And because of that, on this occasion, I will try as best, and as clearly as possible, to summarize and voice your less heard voices to the developer regarding the five things that players hate most in empires and puzzles. But before we move on, I want to tell you that I have just tried a cool game in the last few days, which I am sure that after my explanation is over, you will agree with my opinion. But before that, I want you to try to guess what the game is. These are the hints. It is one of the most famous MMORPG games. It has 4 million active users and 250 million downloads and has super high store reviews. Has more than 800 champions, 16 factions, 1 million builds, and more than 30 bosses. And what's more, you can play it together with your friends and family across platforms whether from your mobile device, tablet, laptop, or PC. So based on these hints, can you guess what the game is? Yep, you're right. None other than Raid Shadow Legends. And if you download Raid Shadow Legends now, using my link and code, you have the opportunity to get two types of real-life prizes. Firstly, you will have the opportunity to win gaming consoles, smartphones, Amazon gift cards worth $5,000, and of course, legendary champions. You can get this just by participating in the Summer Tavern minigame starting from June 10th to July 10th, where after you download Raid Shadow Legends using my code, you type summertavern.clarium.com in your browser, enter the Raid ID, and start searching for hidden items. Isn't that simple? And secondly, you can also get two months of YouTube Premium for free. You only need to do three easy steps. First, download Raid Shadow Legends using my link before July 17th, play the game for at least five days, and reach level 20 within 30 days. Then the second step, you create a Plarium ID and connect it to your rate account. And step three, all you have to do is accept the terms and conditions and official rules on the promotions tab. Then after that, you will get a free two month YouTube premium subscription. Isn't that great? And not only that, you can also get a huge head start in the game with a legendary champion, where you only need to use the promo code Monkey King and you will get Sun Wukong, who is a champion with the ability to steal buffs, block buffs, deal strong damage, and he has a passive skill that can fully revive him. And it doesn't stop there. You can also get two epic champions, namely Terrell and Rector Draft, who are the top champions and are super strong supports in the game. If you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends now by clicking the link in the description, or you can scan my QR code. And you will have the opportunity to win real-life prizes from the Summer Tavern event and two months of free YouTube Premium as well as getting the best starter pack which will definitely help you a lot while playing the game. You can find me by the nickname Holy Paladin, or you can also join my clan, namely Empire's Knights, and let's have some fun together in the game. Finally, thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and to be honest, I really like the graphics, gameplay and mechanics offered in the game, and I think this is a fun and enjoyable MMORPG game to play, even when I'm editing videos. I'm sure you've done a great job on this game, and I hope you keep it that way. And now, let's go back to the video. Based on my two posts in the past few days, I asked players 
as well as viewers of my channel, to share and name the top 5 things they dislike most in empires and puzzles. And from there I found that there were 5 things they didn't like the most, starting from gameplay, the appearance of the user interface in the game which was too full of ads, bad and unfair updates, summon portals, and new heroes. After I summarized and ranked them, I was finally able to conclude and sort what players dislike the most from these 5 things. And I want to thank those of you who have shared your opinions in my post, because without you I'm sure I would have had even more difficulty finding and explaining the things that most players don't like. Without further ado, let's start discussing the fifth thing players don't like, namely gameplay. In summary, the gameplay in empires and puzzles depends on several basic things, namely tiles, troops, heroes, and battle items, where if one of these basic things is missing, then you could say that the overall gameplay will become more difficult. One example of the most problematic situation in empires and puzzles is tiles, where if you bring several heroes with the same type of element, you will often find that the tiles from that many elements will become rarer on the board. So this makes it quite difficult for some players to find and make tile combos, so in most cases, these players experience defeat. You will often encounter this problem in every mode, be it campaign, raid, war, and titan. However, for the campaign and titan, because you can still use battle items, the gameplay doesn't become that difficult. But if you encounter this problem in raid and war, then most of the end result is defeat. Then, apart from tiles, there are several events that are quite difficult for players to face, such as the event that ended a few weeks ago, namely Sanctuary of Gargoyles, where this event can be said to have a fairly high level of difficulty compared to other challenge events. I personally often repeat the final stage using gems, but still losing. And next is the Masterclass event, where in this event, players face difficulties because the recommended power gap is quite high, and there are limitations on the types of hero classes that can participate, where I alone, cannot complete this event due to a lack of power in heroes. And actually, there are still several more events such as the contest of elements which require a large roster of heroes and are certainly not friendly to new players. And the tower event, which requires too many players to buy tower energy and also requires a lot of heroes and battle items to be able to complete the tower stage. Broadly speaking, perhaps these are some of the things that players hate most about the gameplay in empires and puzzles. Next, we move on to number 4 namely bad and unfair updates. And for bad and unfair updates, the biggest problem that most commonly occurs here is a lack of innovation. If you pay attention over the past few years, developers have not found any new ways to increase players' desire to play. For example, every month we will be presented with events, trials, and challenges that have the same gameplay. So many players don't even try to find new strategies, other than having to catch up and upgrade the level of new heroes. Most updates from developers only lead to buffs or nerfs to hero stats and skills. For example, recently there was an update on Garten, where Garten now no longer has the counterattack skill. So many players who had gotten Garten before it was nerfed became angry because they felt this treatment was unfair. And I personally think so too. I still remember the time when Teluria, Vela, and Gravemaker were the deadliest combo in Empires and Puzzles. So many players even dared to go all out to chase these three heroes, but in the end, as we all know, they hit by nerf. Since then, players began to feel deeply annoyed with the developer. So some of them decided to stop spending, and some also decided to stop playing. I understand how it feels to get a strong hero and suddenly become weak, just because the developer thought that this hero was too strong to be allowed to survive in the meta rankings. So even without conducting a survey to the players, the developers with less mature consideration make less wise decisions. So it wouldn't be wrong to say that many players think they are too ignorant in dealing with the communities and forums they create. And next, we move on to number 3, namely microtransactions. It cannot be denied that to this day, almost all mobile games offer microtransactions. As we all know, the packs offered in this game are mostly to improve and speed up the player's grinding process in the game. But what actually makes players feel that this game is not good, is because there are so many pop-up ads that appear even when they have just logged into the game. So this makes them annoyed even just to read, let alone by the existing packs. And if we notice that almost 30% of the screen display is filled with offer ads, if we leave it for just a few minutes, then not long after, the ad will pop up again. And not only that, many players feel that this game is very pay to win because the gameplay mechanism does not support players with classic or season one heroes, being able to beat the newest or meta heroes, whether it's because of the tiles or because the power gap is too big. 
So it is not wrong if many players think that only players who spend the most money in this game can enjoy the game. In short, it is a pay-to-win game. Next, we go to number 2, namely Bad Summon Portal. Since this game was released, the Summon Portal feature has increased in variety to what we know today. The main problem for players from this Summon Portal is the odds. As you already know, the odds on Summon Portal are now generally below 2%. Some of you may think that this is a reasonable percentage and is not that much of a problem. But maybe many of you feel that these odds are very small and unreasonable because these odds make it difficult for you to get a legendary hero. And I can tell you that you are right and have the right to be angry because this situation is quite unfair for players who are not spenders. If you see my video some time ago where I summoned at the Untold Tales event and I didn't even get a single 5 star out of the dozens of summons I made, which is very annoying for me. And I guarantee, you will definitely be even angrier when you hear my following statement. If you watch my video back in 2020 which discusses Summon Portal's odds, where in the past, the Summon Portal odds were above 2%, even almost 4%. So the question now is, why has the current Portal odds percentage changed? The long answer is, the smaller the odds percentage, the more pulls the player must make to get a legendary hero. To make pulls, players will definitely need gems or event coins, most of which are obtained from purchases. So the simple answer is, the odds percentage is reduced so that players can spend more money in the game. And to be honest, I hope that the developer pays attention to this crisis, because what's the point of lowering the odds percentage if there are fewer and fewer players playing the game? Why not just increase the odds again and let players enjoy the game? If you've made it this far, please comment, increase the summon odds in the comments section, and we'll see how many players are aware of this. And next we get to the first number, namely the new heroes. Starting from 2023 to 2024, you can definitely see that there are lots of new heroes coming to empires and puzzles. And in my opinion, the number of heroes now is too much, compared to the number of heroes that existed in 2018 to 2020. In my opinion, there would be no mistake if many players say that the power gap between classic heroes and new heroes is too big. And it's true, I can assume that this is their strategy, because if classic heroes are made stronger, they can even compete and fight against new heroes. Then there is no real reason for players to chase and get new heroes. Therefore, they make classic heroes look outdated, to encourage players to look for new heroes, again for what? Definitely to boost revenue. Therefore, players who aim for powers and new heroes often feel proud at the beginning, but face disappointment in the end. Because indeed, the strategy of making heroes obsolete is the main tool they can rely on most to boost revenue. That's why from time to time, many players complain that they have fallen into the nerf trap, where after several months of getting a new strong hero, not long after, that hero was completely nerfed. Take a simple example, namely Garden. So in short, you could say that even when a new hero comes out with great stats and skills, even to the point of becoming a meta, then you only have to count the days until finally, that hero is nerfed or obsolete by the developer. This is no longer a secret that needs to be covered up, because in reality, most players have seen and experienced it themselves. So overall, these are the 5 things that players hate the most in empires and puzzles. I know that there are still a lot of things that haven't been covered in my explanation, but I can say that most of the things I shared earlier are important points that have been voiced by players for a long time. I hope that by publishing this video, developers can at least pay attention to some of the important points that I conveyed in the video. Indeed, some of the statements I made throughout the video were very firm and bold, but I said this because I really love this game. And I think the players who voiced this are also people who have the same feelings as me. So hopefully this video reaches the ears and minds of developers so that they can at least understand the concerns of these players and can consider wisely how to make this game better and more enjoyable. And finally, I thank all my loyal viewers who continue to actively watch and comment on each of my new videos. I can say that you are all great, and I am very proud to be able to receive your full support. Because without your presence, I am sure that I could not have all the things I have now. Thank you once again to all of you. I hope you all stay healthy and blessed, and see you in the next video.